come before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice offerings, or sacrifice the peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, right then, God gave him another heart. Ooh. Hallelujah. God was the original transplant surgeon. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God said, I'm going to give you a new heart. Amen. So when he tells us he wants us to serve him and love him with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. Amen. And that's the first commandment. We need to understand that God has got some great things for the people in this world today. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I want you to understand it's not a matter of what religion you are. God could care less what sign is outside of a property or even if we got a sign or not. The only thing he's looking for is somebody who will sell out and say, God, whatever you got for me, that's what I desire. Hallelujah. Uh, come on. He needs some hungry people today. He needs some thirsty people today. He said he that hunger and thirst after righteousness and what? Amen. It's because there's a heart issue. Amen. You know, when a, <clears throat> a perfectly healthy guy goes out to play golf one morning, and uh, I mean, my cousin was one of those kind of guys. He was he was really a health nut. I mean, they did everything right. They ate right. I would. Where his, his brother's over here drinking alcohol like a fish, and. Uh, eating McDonald's burgers every day, all the unhealthy stuff. And I, I used to laugh because my cousin Glenn, the one that was real healthy, he would come by and he would, he would make fun of him because he, he said, man, you don't stop eating them shakes, they're going to kill you. Eating them water burger shakes and them big fat hamburgers, they're going to kill you. And, and, and to this day, he's still eating them. <laughs> Amen. But the guy that was the health nut uh, goes out onto the golf course one morning and plays around the golf and comes back into the clubhouse with his buddies and sitting there at the table all of a sudden just falls over dead. You know what was the problem? There was a heart problem that he didn't know he had. And he had just had a physical just a few weeks before then from what I understand. <coughs> But there was no heart problem detected. But there was a heart problem. And that was what killed him. Amen. In the spirit world, there's a lot of folks out there that's got heart problems spiritually that don't know. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we need to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the Lord or not. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, we can just be bop right straight through life and just assume, I'm well, back yonder somewhere, I, I, I got the Holy Ghost back yonder somewhere. I, I was baptized in Jesus' name, as the Word of God said, and, and now everything is all right, and now I'm cool, and, and we can go through life believing that we're once saved, always saved. I'm sorry it doesn't work that way. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. You can fall. You're not God. You're not invincible, hallelujah. Amen. You can mess up. You can back up. You can quit being as close to God as you used to be. Hallelujah. Amen. You can go to hell after having had the Holy Ghost. Amen. Paul said his greatest fear was that after having preached to others, he himself should become a castaway. Why would Paul say that if it was once saved, always said, I'm sorry. Amen. Pentecostal folks, we are some of the world's worst about that. Amen. We are. We don't teach it, but we are some of the world's worst about living it because we feel like we got the Holy Ghost back in our 40 years. We don't have to speak in tongues again. We're good to go. Let me tell you something. Now, Paul said, I die daily. You know what he was dying from? He was dying out to desires and, and, and temptations and, and things that kept hitting his flesh. Amen. We need to take a 
hit today. Amen. We, we've got an enemy that we're fighting. He's a formidable foe. Amen. And he's trying to fill up a hell that wasn't even made for us with our people. But I Change their hearts have been renewed and changed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter one, verse fifteen. Under all, under the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, it is nothing pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. The Bible talks about you can <clears throat> have your conscience seared with a hot iron. So you're going back and doing the same things over and over. Finally, God just says, you know what? I'm back up and let them go. Uh -huh. And, and, and if, if they keep going, you know what happens? The Bible said he will send a strong delusion. I posted this on Facebook a while back and got quite a few responses. Most of them not good. But when God sends a strong delusion, you know what it is? It, uh, you know what a delusion is? Anybody know what a delusion is? It looks like the real thing. It feels like the real thing. But it's not the real thing. Hallelujah. I, I've talked to people that, that have been given a strong delusion. And I know from the way their lifestyle is, they're, they're drinking, they're, they're doing the things that they never could do when they were in the church. They're out there doing those things and partying and having a good time, but yet they still speak in tongues and they still, oh, they have prophecies in their services and they have a move of what they call the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, it is the Holy Ghost movement. Hear me? But it's not moving in the way it moves in our churches. It's not. It's the Holy Ghost, but it's a strong delusion. Amen. He allows them to feel that everything is all right. And the word said on the, on the last of that scripture is that they can believe the lie and be damned. We're not talking about folks that ain't ever been in church. We're talking about folks that have the Holy Ghost and have been baptized in Jesus' name that fall away from truth. Amen. They begin to follow after the desires and the things of this world and begin to change their churches, amen, and their, and their own lifestyle to, to fit in with the world and to fit in with church. I'm sorry. You cannot fit into God's mold and be molded by the world. You know why? Because the people that are in the world are molded by the gods of this world, and God is not the gods of this world. What is the God's this world? It's the little, the little spirits, the little demons that mold you and shape you. Even they'll put a little ring in your nose and they'll lead you around. And you think all this stuff you're doing yourself, it ain't you at all. God is not in it. God backs off and says, okay, let them go. No? And so this little demon just leads you all over the world and you do your own little thing. Finally, one day God said, ha ha, look at here, they're coming to repentance. <laughs> Amen. They're coming before me and repenting. And because they're repenting, I'm just going to clip that little ring in the nose that the devil's had all this time. And now they're going to rejoice in my temple. Hallelujah. Now they're going to rejoice in my presence. Why know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Whose you are? and you're bought with a price. You're not your own. I don't belong to me anymore. The moment I begin to claim my own self again is the moment that God begins to back up and say, okay, buddy, have it your way. Hallelujah. I don't want that to happen. I want to be right in the center of his will. I want to be in the center of his kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah. And so what do I do? I have to surrender myself to him. Amen. I have to give him everything, Brother Rob. I have to let him know, amen, that without a doubt, there's nothing in this world, amen, that's going to hinder me. There's nothing in this world that's going to hold me back. I'm going to be everything that he wants me to be. Hallelujah. 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 All right, so then let's go on. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God, little g, of this world, spirits of hell, in other words, have blinding the minds of them which believe not. Do this. When you're in the world, your mind is blinded. There's these little imps that run around all the way where we don't see them. 
They do come right up to me and sit down right beside old Rob. He's in service and he's trying to worship. And this little imp comes up and says, You know what that old boy said about you on the job today, right? And Rob said, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know what you ought to do tomorrow? You ought to just nail that dude. I was like, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's trying to worship. And he saw him and he said, What? You might as well just go on. You know, you're not going to get to church anyway. Why don't you, you know, just go ahead and hit him tomorrow? Go ahead and do something. Yeah. Not that I would do that, but just saying. We are tempted by the spirits of this world. And then you're, I don't care how long you've lived for God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, the devil will never mess with me. Guess what? If he's not messing with you, you're probably already in trouble because you're lost. There you go. So the devil ain't going to mess with folks that's already lost. They don't have no reason to. He's only going to be after those folks that's got the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's already living for God and serving Him and doing everything within their power to stand firm in the faith. Amen. That's the ones He's after. You know why? Because you're the ones that are doing the most damage to His kingdom. Hallelujah. You know what He goes after? He goes after prayer warriors. He goes after folks that know how to fast and pray. Amen. He does. He's not interested in some gay who out here on the street who gets kind of uh, hallelujah. He's God tiptoeing through the spiritual tulips. So I'm going to pass out some of these little tracks to you guys. And you know what they say in the tracks? You know, this is how you can feel good today about yourself. Give me a break. Only way I'm going to feel good about myself is when the Holy Ghost comes in. <laughs> that makes a new creature out of me. The only way I'm going to ever feel good about what I am and who I am Amen. It's when I become something in Him. You hear me tonight. Amen. Y'all, some of y'all are turning me off, but I want you to understand. Amen. The only way you need to be able to feel good about yourself is when you come in contact with God and that anointing of the Holy Ghost comes on you. And it changes you. I don't care how long you had the Spirit of God. Amen. You can sit on an outer pew and not lift your hands and not worship Him and just sit back and moan grown about all your problems and leave it to God. He'll just kind of bypass you and go to your brother on the next street. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Amen. I don't want him to miss me. I don't want to miss my blessing. I come to the house of God. I come in here to worship and serve him. Amen. When I leave the house of God, I'll leave the house of God to serve him. Nowhere in my walk with God is there a place to look back. Nowhere is there an exit ramp off that main highway. Hallelujah. 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 You know what? I pass them all the time, those exit ramps. I see them, but I just keep looking ahead. Hallelujah. The Bible says, look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If I've got my eyes on him, if I've got, come on, if I've got my mind made up, I can pass those exit ramps on the road of life. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Why don't we give him a clap? All right. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of, God, of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. St. Corinthians 8 12, for if there be first a willing mind, ooh, I mean, have got a willing mind. It is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Ephesians 4 23. Said and to be renewed, where? In the spirit of your intellect. Mind. What's the heart of man? We already talked about that. The the, the brain, the, the nervous system, all of that is the heart of a man. Everything works. I learned a lot just by going to chiropractors over the years. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Everything you've got works off of your brain and spinal cord. That is your lifeline. That is the heart of man. Amen. Why, that's, how do you know that? The Bible said 
talks about the thoughts of the heart. We're continually wicked. Amen. We've got to we've got to have our minds, amen, made up. Your mind is your intellect, amen. Your heart is is that physical uh, brain and, and all that good stuff that, that keeps you controlled and keeps you moving forward, amen. I've got to give him everything. I've got to give him my heart, but I've also got to give him my intellect. I've got to give him my mind, hallelujah. Oh, if I can lose my mind for him, hallelujah. If I can lose it in him. Brother Condi, that's, that's, you know, we talk about losing your mind, man. You know, he, he lost his mind. Well, if you lost it in Jesus, that's a good thing. And then you know why? Because he lost that mind of the world. Oh, come on. The Bible said no man will serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and love the other, or you'll despise the one and cleave to the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? It's the monetary system. It's the, it's the very lifeline of this world. Hallelujah. We cannot serve this world and its goods and serve God effectively. Well, come on. All right. That's why I said seek you first. Seek you first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hallelujah. And all of these things are added unto you. Amen. We, we get it out of order sometimes. We begin to seek the things of the world first. And, and when we do, God just kind of backs up and says, okay, I'm going to watch this one. Hallelujah. I know where this is headed. I've seen this before. Amen. But when we're told it's so bad. Hallelujah. God makes changes in our lives sometimes. And, and uh, you know, we, 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 we wonder why. You know, I, I, I asked God why. Uh, that this wreck happened and it put me, uh, you know, out of work for a few weeks. But then all of a sudden, God began to deal with me. And I began to come up here and lock myself in the church for days at a time and just pray and seek Him. And, and I began to see one of the things that God is doing. Hallelujah. Amen. He's changing me. Amen. He's changing my mind. Amen. I, I, I've had the Holy Ghost over 40 years. Amen. But yet some reason or another, God wanted to change my mind. Amen. And so he, he brings me in contact with him. He lets something happen because I, I got so wrapped up in the things of the world and I, I wasn't intentional. Amen. You just do it. You, you get a job and, and, and you all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you're getting more and more hours and they will pour them on you. Believe me. And then they give you a salary position and you work more hours for less money. Hallelujah. And so all of a sudden you look up one day and you're bowed down up to your eyeballs with the world. And you're like, what in the world am I doing? And so I begin to pray, God, I need your help. I'm in, I'm in a desperate situation. I am bowed down in this stuff. And I don't want to be so wrapped up in the world because you're my first love. Hallelujah. Oh, remember what he said in Revelations? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because you've left your first love. Hallelujah. I, I don't want to leave him. I don't want to fall out of love with him. I want to get in more love with him. Hallelujah. I want him to be my main squeeze. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I, I've got my mind. I've got to have a mind change. You see, my mind's wrapped up with the world and, and I, all this stuff out here. And you can get so involved and so wrapped up in the world that you totally lose sight of God. You know that? <laughs> all right. For there be first a willing mind is accepted according to the man I mean, hath and hath not according to that he hath not. All right. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know you're the spirit of your mind? Uh, you, man is made up of body, soul, and spirit. 
So when he says the spirit of your mind 